Papa TV. Hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to Folkston Papa TV. Broadcasting live from the beach. My name is Johnny and I have a green face with red lips, googly eyes like a fish and my hair is golden yellow like pineapple leaves. This week we bring you no more, no less than Aya Nakamura with the spider's thread. Yes, a Japanese tale just for you in the comfort of your homes in these strange times. Enjoy. The Spider's Thread. This short animated film is based on a short story by the modern Japanese writer Aktagawa Yunosuke. A man called Kandata is in hell because of the monstrous crimes he committed in his life. He did, however, perform one good deed. Looking down from paradise, the Buddha is moved by this compassionate act and sends down a thread of hope. But how will Kandata respond? The settings and characters are created using a mix of found images, photos and drawings. Among the key sources of imagery are woodblock prints by the 19th century Japanese artist Hokusai, and others by artists of the same period, and old samurai movie posters from the 1950s and 60s. Sometimes the camera stays still while a long, single image drawn on a scroll of paper slides past. At other points, a series of prints are shuffled in front of the camera to suggest movement through the infinite miles between heaven and hell. The characters are cut out and collaged together from different images with a deliberately rough, handmade feel. Some images have been enlarged so many times that the dots of the half-tone printing process are visible, emphasised when the camera zooms right into the image to the point that it blurs. Characters are animated using rods to move them across the scene, sometimes hidden, sometimes visible. At times the hand of the human animator appears, bringing in a title card that gives us the location. The film travels between paradise and hell with a flashback to life on earth. Paradise is in colour, while hell is almost entirely in black and white. Scenes on earth are set against a background of soft brown paper. The Buddha appears as a collage of different kinds of images. His head comes from a photograph of a stone statue of Buddha, his body from a coloured illustration of Jesus. The head has half-closed eyelids and a tranquil smile, with curly hair gathered in a bun and a bump between his eyebrows representing the third eye. He wears a robe in a blue and yellow geometric pattern from the Islamic tradition, with a blue cloak draped over it. His bare feet peep out below the robe, and he holds his arms lifted to the sides, palms facing us. There's a halo behind his head, and he's surrounded by golden radiance against a blue sky. At other points, a close-up of his bare feet is created with three-dimensional plastic toy feet emerging from the blue and yellow geometric patterned robe. Kandata appears as a young man with spiky black hair in a fringe and a long scar down the right side of his face, running from his forehead across his eyelid and down to his cheek. When we first meet him in hell, he wears a loincloth but is otherwise naked. He's shown in black and white line drawings, collaged with photographs and hand-drawn elements. Hell is populated by sinners who are half-naked wearing rags or loincloths, their limbs thin and twisted in pain. Here Kandata encounters three terrifying giants, a red ogre with fearsome teeth and eyebrows, as well as a living skeleton with claws for fingers and a yellow rotting corpse. And now to the film. The Spider's Thread White letters drawn with a brush on a black background. We zoom in right into the letters. And out again. The white brush strokes now Japanese characters. Lotus flowers float on apricot-coloured clouds. 
more lotus flowers slide into place around a pond. A hand lowers a printed title on a small blue card. It reads, Paradise. A figure slides along behind the lotus flowers, emerges into view, the Buddha. A view from above of the Buddha's feet moving over rippling water. A coloured image of the Buddha with tranquil face, arms raised with palms towards us, a golden glow behind him. The Buddha's head tilts. He notices something down below. He looks down at his feet. And down, through the water of the lotus pond, down through the clouds. A cloudscape printed on a card slides past the camera. Pink towers of fluffy clouds at sunset. Another card slides past as we descend through the clouds. One photo goes to reveal another. A landscape of white clouds stretching into the distance with wisps of cirrus cloud against a china blue sky. We drop through the layers of cloud. Colour goes. The clouds darken. Shadows gather. Inky lines crisscross the clouds. Photos give way to drawings. Ominous grey clouds billow across. As we descend, black spikes jab inwards. Tiny human figures cling to barren rocks, dwarfed by towering metal spikes. A hand descends with a black title card that reads, Hell. It goes. A man peeps out from behind a rock. A red ogre looms close. The man hides. The ogre goes. A close-up on the man's face. A long scar runs down his cheek. His eyes scan from left to right. The red ogre swoops down from above. The man dives for cover. The ogre goes. The man emerges. He's thin, half-naked, a rag around his middle. A giant claw appears, hovers overhead. The man hides. The claw belongs to a giant skeleton. The jaw of the skull open in a terrifying laugh. The skeleton scoops up a human in its claw, plucks another helpless sinner from the rocks. And another. The skeleton goes. The man peeps out, his eyes roll in horror. Will he be next? The red ogre reappears, looking for victims. The man looks desperately for an escape route. A rotting corpse glides through the mountain of needles, hair scraped over yellow skull, flesh and guts inside a cage of bones. The rotting corpse grips a red-hot spike on which he collects his victims. The man with the scar peers out, terrified, hides again. The rotten corpse glides past. Cautiously, the man emerges. A hand brings a red label that shows his name, Kandata. A close-up on his face. The camera zooms in, in, into his eye. Darkness. A point of light appears. It grows, swirls, daylight. On Earth, Kandata stands as he was in life, a robber and an outlaw. A montage of scenes from his life. He aims an arrow at an old man tied to a tree. He strangles a man from behind. He grins at us. Intoxicated with power, he holds a sword above the head of a young samurai. He uses any weapon, a sword, a naginata spear, a farmer's mattock, an axe. His victims are old, young, rich, poor. They cower in fear and agony. 
Hero of his own story. His grinning face multiplies, eight faces in a circle like petals on a poisonous flower. They spin. A close-up of his triumphant face. Bare feet walk from right to left. Kandata recoils as he feels something underfoot. He lifts his foot to reveal a small spider with a red body. Kandata reaches down, picks up the spider, brings it to his face, looks at it closely. He carries the spider in his open palm to the branch of a tree. The spider leaps onto a leaf. Kandata's hand goes. We fly back up through the dark clouds, the pink and apricot-coloured clouds, to paradise. The Buddha inclines his head, extends his open palm. The little red spider hops onto it. Against a flaming red sunset, the spider descends on his thread from heaven, down through the clouds pink and white clouds unrolling beneath him through the layers of pale sky. A flock of geese fly past in V formation. The clouds become darker, greyer, black. The little spider is rocked from side to side by the wind. The spider continues down, down, to the spikes and barren rocks of hell. The spider floats down towards the top of a man's head. The spider hangs on its silken thread alongside Kandata. It jumps off, leaving the thread hanging. Kandata notices the thread. He tugs on it, his mouth open, looks up. The thread goes straight up and out through a hole in the roof of hell. Kandata looks from side to side, no one's watching. A smile appears on his face. He tugs the thread, it holds. He climbs, clinging to the thread with bare feet and hands. He climbs up and up. We zoom out to a wide shot of a man clinging to a rope surrounded by darkness. Kandata slowly climbs upwards and up and up. slows down, stops, his head tilts as he looks down, eyebrows shoot up. <gasps> Exclamation marks for eyes. The camera moves back down the thread, down, down. At the bottom a hand grips the thread, below it a mass of hundreds of people all grab push, shove, all desperate to get hold of the thread for themselves to escape from hell. Bodies twist and grapple. Some fall off. The mountain of sinners clinging to the thread trembles. Kandata opens his mouth wide. An intertitle. This thread's mine. Who said you could climb it? Get off! Get off! His hand grips the thread, it snaps. The broken thread is reflected in the pupil of his eye. He tumbles through empty space, into the distance, 
A broken thread hangs out of reach, far above him. As he falls, the image fades and disappears. In paradise, the Buddha cups the red spider in the palm of his hand. He releases the spider. A fat tear runs down his cheek. The Buddha stands among the lotus flowers, the background of clouds touched by golden light. He glides slowly away as a hand descends from above with a card that reads... The end. The Buddha goes. The hand takes away the card. Japanese characters read The End. Darkness. The Spider's Thread, created by Aya Nakamura with Rouge 28 Theatre, based on The Spider's Thread by Aktagawa Yunosuke. Images inspired by Hokusai Manga, the British Museum, Bodhisattva Buddha, the and a Edward Gorey, Katsushka Hokusai, Utagawa Kunyoshi, Katsukawa Shuntei, and Samurai movie posters. Images, puppeteering, voice, camera and editing, Aya Nakamura. Additional puppeteering, voice and camera, Moisen Nori. Composer, Verity Lane. Sure. Ko Ishikawa Percussion, Bebe Wang Audio Mix, Immersivo Calligrapher, Achi Toriyama Producer, Paul Pyrrhus, Rouge 28 Theatre Audio Describer, Eleanor Margulies Editing Consultant, Monica Kita Special thanks to Ludovic Pujol, Gary Giles, The Japan Foundation, Extant, Riverhouse Barn Arts Theatre Norwich Puppet Theatre, Junko Takekawa, Clarissa Vidya, Paper Gang Theatre, Nao Nagai, Sachi Kimura, Tomoko Komura, Adam Hipke, New Earth Theatre, formerly Yellow Earth Theatre, Norton Farm Centre for the Arts, Daiwa Anglo-Japanese Foundation, the British Association for Japanese Studies, Lewisham Library and Information Services, the British Museum and the Victoria and Albert Museum, London. Commissioned by Folkestone Puppet Festival. Funded by Arts Council England and the Japan Society. www.ayanakamura.com www.rouge28theatre.co.uk Copyright Aya Nakamura 2020 <laughs>